Antarctica. Not long ago a frontier of terrestrial exploration, this frozen continent is now at the frontier of science. Summer arrives at the South Pole in October and lasts into February. Here, the sun rises and sets only once a year, circling the horizon every 24 hours. Ice crystals in the atmosphere create sun dogs and intricate rings of refracted light around the sun. In the height of Antarctic summer, the thermometer usually reads between 20 and 40 degrees below zero. It's a sunny summer day in Christchurch, New Zealand, as Antarctic travelers are outfitted with extreme cold weather gear. It's their last chance to ensure their gear fits properly before boarding the LC-130 Hercules aircraft for an eight-hour southbound flight. Inside the cabin, space is at a premium. The roar of the propellers is so loud that earplugs are required and conversation is almost impossible. Our first stop is McMurdo Base, the logistical headquarters of U.S. polar programs. While the Antarctic interior is largely devoid of animal life, penguins, seals, and whales abound near the coast. Weather permitting, ice cube scientists soon depart for their final destination. Landing at the South Pole, the pilots keep their engines running to keep moving parts on the plane from freezing in the frigid polar air while the plane is unloaded. About 230 people live and work at the South Pole in the summer months. Most visitors to the South Pole sleep in temporary structures. Without the darkness of night, it's easy for the human body to become disoriented and fall into an irregular sleep cycle. Most scientists will stay here for a few weeks or months at a time. In February, temperatures begin to drop below minus 40 degrees. A team of about 50 people remain at the station after the last plane leaves. They're prepared to face six months of darkness, isolation, and extreme cold, braving the Antarctic winter to monitor and maintain the ice cube telescope and other scientific instruments until the next summer season arrives. <laughs>